Hi, this is Jason with RPC Electronics, and this is Lesson 2 of Creating a Library in EagleCAD. Um, as, we as we talked about in the first lesson, there's three elements that need to be created for every, for every library. And in this lesson, we're going to go over the symbol. The symbol is the actual uh, element that shows up on the schematic when you create the schematic. So it can be um, a specific symbol uh, for a specific part, say as a diode or resistor. Um, or it can be something a little more generic, almost like a block. And in this case, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a, uh, a very simple block type diagram uh, or symbol. Uh, I've pulled up the data sheet for the 741 op amp. Now, anytime you create a new part, 9 times out of 10, unless you have it memorized, you'll need the data sheet. And the data sheet's going to tell you many things. And one of the most important things is it's going to tell you how many pins are on the device and it's also going to tell you what each pin is or what function that it has and in this case the 741 is a very standard part it's an 8 pin dip IC it can, this is also available in the surface mount part uh, we'll do another lesson later on that shows you how to create a surface mount part and add it to the same library that we're creating in this case it's just a very simple uh, 8 pin device and here's the listing of all the pin functions we've got uh, offset null 1 inverting input non-inverting input VCC negative or, or uh, ground offset null 2 output VCC plus and no connection on pin 8 so let's uh, let's just dive right into it uh, by by now you have saved your uh, your library file the LBR file and what you want to do next is you want to click on the symbol uh, the symbol button and I've already done that and what you want to do is you'll you'll put in a name for that particular symbol in this case it's a 741 op amp so I did 741 dash op amp and I'm gonna hit cancel because I've already created it but you'll you'll want to create that and save it and now you'll be presented with an actual grid and this grid if we just go up here and check you can see the grid is a 0.1 inch as we discussed in lesson one and the display is on by default so you can see the actual grid that you're working with so first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw just a just a, a rectangle that we can that we can start our, our symbol with and that's simply done by clicking the wire uh, or it's it's really just a line we're not really drawing a wire here we're just drawing a box but they call it wire and eagle so we're gonna click on that and the other thing we're gonna want to do is we're gonna make sure symbols is selected up in the top left drop down here and it's uh, if you've gone if you still have the default colors in eagle it's this uh, dark red color so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and draw out a very simple box to be our to be our diagram and as you can see I've made it a little bit wider and you'll see why here in a second why I've done that but more importantly I've sized this so I have one two three four grid crossings and four as well on the other side and that's for our pins we'll have pins one two three four and so forth so the next thing to do is to add pins now in the bottom left here of, the, of our tools on the left side you'll see one named pin click on that and by default we're going to be given a pin that is 0.2 inches long as you can see here you have a choice of doing uh, a long medium short or even no pin but what you'll notice is the green dot is still there, the green circle. This green circle is the actual junction point where your wire and the schematic is going to connect to. And you'll notice that that is always on a grid crossing. And that's very important because of what we discussed earlier about the grid needing to stay at 0.1 inch. Everything is based on this. So we want to always make sure that that circle is always at one of those grid crossings. And it will by default as long as you don't change the grid. Typically when I'm creating an IC, I'd like to use either a short or a medium pin. In this case, we'll go with the short pin. But there's also one other thing that's important. Very Right next to the pin length selection, you'll notice that there's four more buttons. One's marked off. One's marked pad. Next one's marked pin. 
and the last ones mark both. Each pin, no matter what device, has two names. And in an IC's case, it's especially important. You have a pin number as well as the pin function. And this will make more sense when, when the uh, device and the symbol have been married together. Uh, either one or the other can be displayed or both can be displayed at the same time. In this case, since we're using an IC that has numbers for the pins as well as function names, we want to use both. And that's going to make more sense once we get into the third element of the library. So from now on, we're just going to go with both, and it will make more sense later. So we'll start by clicking once, and it will add a pin. And you'll see this P$1. That's an automatic assignment made by Eagle. Two, three, four. You'll notice they just automatically assigns them. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, now we have added all eight pins to our diagram or to our symbol. And the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to name these pins. And we're going to want to name them something meaningful. And that's why we have the data sheet so we can make sure that not only we assign the correct names to the correct pins, but we want, but we want to give them a meaningful name. So in order to do that, we'll come over to the left again, and we'll use our name function, just like we did in, uh, in our introduction uh, lessons. We're going to click on that, and then we can click on each individual pin and assign them a name. So let's go back, and we see that pin 1 is offset null 1, so we'll shorten that down to ON1. ON1, enter, and you can see it's changed the name. Two inverting input. So we'll say INT for inverting. Actually, we'll change that to INVT. Pin 3 is non inverting. So we'll say non, well, we'll say NINVT. That's probably too long. I, INV, we'll, we'll say. N I N V for non inverting. Pin four is VCC negative, so we'll do negative VCC just like that. Number five is offset null two, so we'll use the same thing, but we'll instead we'll do O N two. Number six is output, so we can simply just put out. Number seven is positive VCC, and in this case I'll just use VCC instead of putting the positive symbol. And number eight is no connection, so we'll select NC. So now we've effectively created our symbol and we've assigned all of our pins a name. So there's only two more things we really need to do. We need to give this a name, the whole symbol a name, and we need to give it a value. So we'll go over to our text tool on the left, click text. And in Eagle, the easiest thing to do is give it a generic name that allows Eagle to automatically assign it a name when you create, when you add it to the schematic. And by doing that, you click, you select, or you, I'm sorry, you type greater than and the word name. Now, we can't just leave it like this because it's still in the symbols layer. So we want to go down here on our drop down and select 95 names. Now we can add that to the, to the symbol, and it's married to this symbol now. And the only other thing we want to do is give it a value. So we'll say LM741. And again, we're going to go up here and we're going to change this to the values, number 96. We're going to click that. Now, either one of these values can be changed at the time that you create the schematic. But by default, these will be automatically married to the symbol when you add it to the schematic. OK, that's, uh, that's about enough for this lesson. And in the next lesson, we'll work on the device. So uh, we'll see you then.